coming live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. We're off to Medicine Park. This time it's not for the healing waters. Uh, it's for the frigid insanity that's Plunge Week. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. <sighs> Signed us up, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I just saw it and I was like, you know what? It's New Year, New Us. Okay, so mark your calendars. February 1st, Brett and Harley are going to be ju- jumping in to the ridiculously warm yes waters unseasonably warm waters of medicine park yes it's plunge week going on uh all week down there i don't know what possessed you to think i had no idea we needed to participate in this there are a lot of things where i would have said Mm -hmm. that seems like something brett would have decided that we needed to do as a show okay but here's the thing most of the things I could suggest are eating challenges, and I don't know if you know this or not, I can't eat anything that we talk about anymore. Well, you can. Unless it's a, a bare-naked burger, or a steak, or a grilled chicken thigh. I, it, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm losing it. Maybe it's officially, I've, I've gone. I'm so, going off the deep end. I think that our new our food segments are all going to have to be <laughs> keto and low keto, carb, keto friendly. God bless America! I had to hold an ice cream sundae today to make sure it got to the house in one piece. <laughs> okay, but yeah, we've got tons of stuff to talk about with Madison Park. Stick around. All right, six goes into seven. One is it? God, I'm so frustrated. I'm scared to death. I'm an independent contractor, and I don't want to get punched in the jimmy by the IRS. Brett, why don't you give our buddy Justin over at the Holiday Tax Group a call? One of their specialties is tax preparation and planning. And then on top of that, if you have a run-in with the IRS, they're going to have your back. Perfect. But how do I find them? You can reach them at HolidayTaxGroup.com. And if the independent contractor thing works out for you, they also do estate planning. So they got you back on that one as well. Oh, thank goodness. Thanks for the advice. That's HolidayTaxGroup.com. Holiday with two L's. So, Harley, we've been to Medicine Park, I don't know, a lots of times. A lot of history down there. There is a lot of history in Medicine Park, in and around the area. Love the place. Oh, I do, too. There's it's so much so much character. It is just fun. It is a lot I of mean, fun. I mean, the kids have fun. There's literally a thousand things to do in the area. But I don't know if you know this. Maybe what? you do. I mean, it was founded in 1908 by a lawyer. Yeah, but more importantly, it was founded on July 4th. July 4th, right. I mean, it come on. It was founded... On the, the holiday. The holiday. The party holiday. Right. Elmer Thomas. Now, we've spent some time at Elmer Thomas Lake, haven't we? I had no idea that he founded Medicine Park. Did you know that? I, I did not know that. And also, in 1906, five years after the Wichita Mountain Reserve, Thomas had envisioned a recreational area, like a water source that people could visit. Mm-hmm. The first structure yes. in Medicine Park, and we've been there. There's a bunch of structures now. Was a army surplus tent with a wooden floor. And they just served hot meals. Really? In 1906? I had no idea. Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. But tourists from OKC to North Texas have been flocking here for a century or more. Right. At one point in time, though, it was kind of considered a playground for the rich and maybe even often unsavory. Which is, you don't think that now. No, not at all. But some of the names that you that you run across that have visited the area. Mm-hmm. They're big names, and some of them are more uh, notorious, a little bit notorious. Nefarious characters. So you've got like Will Rogers, mm-hmm. Roy Rogers, right? Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys, who we've talked about a few times. Yes, we have. But uh, Al Capone, I had no idea. I did not know that until I did the research the show. Pretty Boy Floyd. Wow. Bonnie and Clyde are believed to have stayed there while while they were on the run. Yeah, I know it's you. It's weird, but. If you read a little bit of history, especially with or- early day, the early days of organized crime, smaller towns and smaller communities were better places to conduct business because you weren't completely out in the open. 
Nobody really, nobody bothered you. The cops weren't on you. They didn't, they, they didn't know who you were because there was no social media. And you're on a mountain and you can see a car coming for a hundred, hundred miles. And you can hear it coming for a hundred miles. True. Too. So yeah, lo- just a lot of cool history, uh, down there in, uh, Medicine Park. But coming up January 31st to February the 8th, they've got plunge week going on in Medicine Park. And uh, we have an interview yeah. uh, with Tommy Knowles down yeah. in Medicine Park. And we have another interview, a bonus interview, uh-huh. coming up after that about the weather that week, since you and I are going to be participating. I think it's important to get a weather update. And I, how do we tease it? Can we, is there, is there a proper way to tease this guest? I mean, um, I'd say maybe you could call him a real family guy. Right. Or the odds are likely. <laughs> that he'll deliver an accurate weather forecast. That's saying a lot for Oklahoma. Stick around. Well, yeah. coming up January 31st through February the 8th, it's Plunge Week going on at Medicine Park, and here to give us the courage, or at least tell us where we can buy the courage in a bottle probably, to do this thing is Tommy Knowles. Tommy, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to meeting you guys and having you come down and jump in the water with us. Now, you're... Don't say that too loud, because then we're held, you're going to hold. That's it's an audio. <laughs> we're being held accountable to be down there now. So tell me, oh, how, okay, yeah. You know these polar plunges have been going on for for many years. How long has this been going on in Medicine Park? Well, this is the twenty second year consecutively that they've uh, had the polar bear plunge, and that's an event that's put on by the local park tavern. Now, you got to think back 22 years ago in Medicine Park, and this place was kind of a rough place, and there wasn't a whole lot of people coming to town. There wasn't a whole lot of things to do. So it got pretty pretty quiet in the wintertime. So it was just a little 3-2 honky-tonk bar. <laughs> uh, that's a 3.2% beer. Right. You know, the laws have changed since then, and we've got some new owners at the tavern, and they've continued the tradition. It's a, it's a full full bar with the craft beers and uh spirits and and wine and so it's a fun place to hang out and it's 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 a nice friendly place to hang out and we encourage everybody to come and hang out with us uh we're going to have a nice band after the plunge there'll be several hundred people here and they've been doing it for quite a long time we we start there just a little afternoon and about one thirty two o'clock we start lining up out in the center of main street we've got a big old banner and Santa Claus will be leading the parade, and like he's done for the last 22 years, he'll be the first one to jump in, and actually he'll he'll outlast everybody, and he'll be the last one out. That's, oh, that's good. Just no, no. Yeah, <laughs> wow. yeah, this, this guy's in his 60s probably, and um, he'll outlast us all. I mean, I want to get in and out as fast as I can, but this guy will stay in for 15, 20, maybe up to 30 minutes. <laughs> so, uh, Tommy, uh, just kind of right off the gate here how many people get there and then chicken out what's the percentage i want to i want to i don't want to come all the way down there and feel like i'm going to chicken out and then be like in the one percent of people you don't want him to get cold feet right (laughs) you know to be honest with you it took me five years to decide to to do this they told me i wasn't a true parky i do live in medicine park I've, i've just been here six years so i'm not an old parky i guess you'd call me a new parky as we refer to ourselves but yeah, they've always said you're not a true parky unless you do the polar bear plunge. Well, it took me five years to finally make up my mind that I was going to do it. So last year, oh, it got up into the 60s during the day. So I went down there with my trusty little meat thermometer, and I stuck it in the water, and I think it showed 41 degrees the water temperature. That's so a brisk 41. I actually 41. made a post of that on Facebook, and everybody said, well, that's actually pretty warm because there's been several years that it's been in the mid-30s, and I've actually seen them – jump in and break a thin layer of ice off of that. So that would have had to been 32 or less to do that. So you never know. I think uh, we're having a warm winter here. It should be pretty pretty nice jumping weather. Uh, we'll have a minimum of 500, 600 people. You know, it's one of those things I think you kind of make your mind up before you come. You're either mm-hmm. going to do it or you're yeah. not. You're either going to be a bystander and watch or you're going to do it. Or you've got some friends that are that are pushing you and – and, uh, you know, that peer pressure goes a long way. So I, that's what happened to me my first time, which was last year. You well, know, we, I got a little liquid courage in myself. And, and then, you know, a group of friends said, we're doing this. There's no turning back. And sure enough, we did it. And I, I plan on doing it again. 
Well, we've got about two or 3,000 listeners to give us all the peer pressure we need, I guess. So uh, <laughs> I, I guess we're going to end up in the water on that day. So can you kind of walk us through what that looks like? You know, do I, you know, what the... What the, do we need? Yeah, exactly. Do I need to bring a towel, a hair dryer? You dress or... up uh, in anything you want to. I've seen people break out old band costumes from the 1980s. <laughs> uh, I've seen, uh, of course, Santa Claus is going to be in full attire uh, like Santa Claus. Uh, I've seen a full-dressed uh, chicken outfit. I've seen people uh, paint their bodies. They might be wearing Speedos, but they've painted their entire bodies in body paint, so that's a little unusual. And uh, But, hey, it. They get a lot of people that take pictures with them and want to take pictures with them. And, you know, I've seen people in uh, just jeans, shorts. You can wear a robe down there. Just take off the robe and jump in. Have somebody waiting with a towel to warm you up on the way back or, you know, have your clothes ready. And nothing's off limits. It's just pretty much anything goes. I've seen somebody, uh, a woman in a wedding dress jump in. Well, I'm thinking a space blanket, a space blanket and all the fan, you know, <laughs> some hand warmers for my crotch. Uh. There you go. <laughs> so are we going to have yeah, uh, definitely, there'll the, definitely be shrinkage when you jump in. Oh, I'm that's I'm bl- I already told I told Harley, I said, if finally I have something I can blame it on, it's the cold water. Uh. OK, there you go. So It'll either be shrinkage or. uh or uh, the opposite, uh, enough. I don't know <laughs> right. which one, one or the other, and, or, or a little combination of both. Jeez. Well, uh, are we going to have paramedics? Give you a little rundown. Yeah, go. Yo, know, you go ahead. Oh yeah, they, the volunteer fire department's always on hand, right there. And we actually have a very good fire, uh, volunteer fire department, full full set of EMTs and paramedics. But I don't think we've actually ever had an incident, as far as that goes. If anything, somebody might have just kind of slipped, and not on a rock or anything, but might have slipped. Jumping in. What they tell me is like once everybody starts lining up and jumping in, pick your point that you're going to because you never want to turn back because people are jumping in on top of you. Mm, (laughs) Once you make that commitment to jump, you've got to go to the opposite bank because there's several hundred people coming in behind you. So there's there's just a little bit of piece of a a beginner's advice that I would tell you. Don't look back because they're coming in on top of you. (laughs) This is, you know, I've been on low carb for about four days and my mind is just not very much at ease and you were not helping me at all Tommy. <laughs> i uh well tommy oh, be fun. before i stepped on you there you were going to give us a rundown uh why don't you pick back up there yeah we're actually trying something really new this year we've never done it before and one of the local citizens came to us and said i wish we could keep this many people around for a little longer period of time and at least for a couple of nights to stay in our town at, at one of the either a bed and breakfast or an airbnb or one of our local rentals i mean we have as many as 50 or 60 local rentals uh that is kind of we what we're known for is a little tourist town and we like people to come here so this local citizen i'll call him citizen paddock came to us and he said i got an idea i said he said on january 31st the night before the prom uh maybe we the night before the plunge maybe we can have what we call the polar bear prom so it's going to be an adult prom it's going to be at the uh, medicine park music hall Uh, It's going to kick off about 7.30. It'll be with a DJ. Tickets will be available either on the on the the website, medicinepark.com, and you would uh, purchase those through Eventbrite, or you can also purchase them at the door. I think they're a little cheaper for a couple. It's $40 a couple or $25 each, and there's going to be light hors d'oeuvres, and uh, we'll do that for about three hours and see how that goes, and then... Uh, the following day is the plunge, of course, and that is sponsored by the Park Tavern. It's the 22nd year in a row that they've they've done that. And like I said, you walk from the Park Tavern right down the middle of uh, Main Street down to Bass Lake. The actual jump into the water will be actually at around 2 o'clock. And then everybody goes back to the Park Tavern. They've got a really good band from uh, Althus, Oklahoma, Smiling Bob English Band. It's one of the local house favorites there, and they'll play probably for at least three hours after the after the jump. And then wow. later on in the week, we uh, start on February 3rd, they've got a guided creek walk. A lot of people have really never been to Medicine Park. It's be informative. Uh, that starts at the Bath Lake area around 10 a.m. And then also there's a native flute concert up at our new aquarium, and that starts at 2 o'clock. 
Now, moving on to February 4th, there's a guided refuge walk or possibly one of the local bike trails uh, they're talking about. I'm thinking now what they call the Black Trail. That would leave from the Riverside Cafe around 10 a.m. And, and then later that night, music at the Old Plantation Restaurant at 7 o'clock. Well, that's awesome. I didn't know they did uh, music there at the Old Plantation. Yeah, yeah. How long have they been doing that? Again, this is... Well, this is all kind of something new. I oh, mean, okay. they've always on and off uh, had a little acoustic act in the back or, or on the backstage or something. But this, it might be a little cool that night during the middle of the week. So it, it will be inside in one of the in, in the back corner or something. I love, Tommy, um, that you guys are trying to get the off season. You know, it's kind of like having the ski lodge that shuts down in the off season. You know what I mean? Right. It's hard to make, especially right. when you're what keeps the the you know the what is it they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease and you're able to to maintain right. that that level uh even in the off season having things like this i mean i just i, I love what yeah. i love i love Madison park growing up having grandparents in elgin we spent a lot of time in wichita mountains and also in Madison park in harley you your family spends Countless <laughs> weekends in Medicine Park. Yeah, I think my kids probably qualify for citizenship. <laughs> so uh, well, we, I, we are trying to improve on that and keep people, you know, coming back year round. Uh, you know, we we've got some new exhibits and things to do. Uh, there's actually a what I call it this Discovery Outpost. It's actually a children's toy and bookstore, and they have. Uh, different events throughout the week and, and pretty much every weekend. It's it's very interesting. They have a Facebook page, and I'd have to refer you to that to get all their information. But they'll have stuff going through the week and, and also on the weekend for for this, the younger generation, I mean smaller kids. Yeah, and we're trying to do many, many different things, and, and hopefully a lot of these are adult-minded or oriented, and some of them, like, for example, on February 5th, a Hammer Dulcimer concert. I did, a dulcimer is kind of a an old time southern instrument. I think you lay on your lap; it looks mm-hmm. like a small guitar, and you pick on that's it. Right? Be taking place. Yeah. At, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's going to be taking place at Miss Chadwick's Bakery. That's right down there in the middle of uh, downtown, and that's a ten o'clock deal. And then there's also a string theory lecture, and that's at our community center. We have a community center out kind of towards the fish hatchery out there off of Highway 49. That's at 2 o'clock. And then there's also going to be music at the Park Tavern that night at 7 o'clock. Uh, February 6th, we're going to do a poetry reading. That's going to be at a local establishment. They, they sell a lot of Indian and Native uh, jewelry, the Branded Bear, at 10 a.m. And then there's a piano concert uh, during the middle of the afternoon up at the new aquarium up on the side of the hill just off Highway 49 at 2 o'clock. And then the music that night is going to be at the Riverside Cafe at 7 o'clock, and hopefully people come listen to that and, and eat at the Riverside. And Absolutely. that will be inside, not outside. And then uh, February 7th is something kind of neat. It's a local establishment. It's 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 kind of like a – it's not a bed and breakfast, but it's a it's – a, it's a rental, overnight rental place called the Blue Eyed Coyote, but they're going to have high tea and beach ball croquet. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's definitely something it's different. It's going to be a $10 charge for the high tea. The beach ball croquet out on the yard would be for free. I think that's at 2 o'clock. And music again at the Park Tavern that night at 7. And the following Saturday night, is uh, we're going to end up the, the week with a, they're calling it the Polar Party. Oh, wait. The Polar Party is at the Discovery Outpost. That's the children's uh, toy and uh, music store, and, and that's from 2 to 4, four o'clock. But then later that night at the at the music hall, they're having a guitar duo. Lauren huh. and Mark is the, is the group name. It's, I, I don't know if it's kind of like – it's not like dueling, like dueling pianos, but it's yeah. dueling guitars. Oh, wow. That's cool. And there's – and those tickets could be purchased on Eventbrite or at the door, and that would be at the music hall again. So that pretty well winds up the week, Saturday Man, to Saturday. That's a lot of or Friday uh, through the following Saturday. Yeah, eight days of, that's of eight. activities going on, and we we've, we've actually never done that many things in a row. Something new for us that we're trying. So we hope we can get people out and enjoy it, and then we can just grow from here. Well, seven days, uh, well, you know, you've got seven extra days if you survive 
uh, hypothermia. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. assuming you make it to today, today eight, there's a lot of things going on. A little bit for everybody, really. And uh, I hate to use these words, but a lot of ways to put some asses in seats, and that's great. That's what we're looking for. We just want to get people out to Medicine Park, enjoy it. And uh, some people have don't know about it, never been here, and just come out and check us out. And I think you'll be thoroughly happy with what you find out here. It's just so peaceful. There's got a new aquarium you can take the kids to or, or go see yourself. We can do some hiking in the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge. You can take a leisurely stroll along Medicine Creek and just relax down at Bath Lake, or you can have a nice meal at one of our local restaurants and just relax so, and enjoy this slow time of the year. Yeah, it's a it's a great place, and I do think that everybody needs to to find a time to go down there and check it out. Tommy, is there a central location? A lot of people aren't going to be able to make it this particular week. Is there a a place online where people can go and see your calendar of events as they are coming up? Do you guys have a central clearinghouse for that? We we do have a a really nice and easily maneuverable and and updated website. And just go to medicinepark.com and click on the events tab and pretty much all that information you can find right there. That is perfect. Well, Tommy, we do appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much for everything you're doing out there. We're looking looking forward to uh, coming down and taking part in this thing. And if you can tell us, we'll get a you know tell us where to meet up with you. We'd love to love to shake your hand before we die. <laughs> uh, I'll be at the Park Tavern anywhere from probably twelve thirty to two. You can probably just about ask anybody there. Point me in the direction or show me where Tommy Knoll is. And I'm pretty well known around these parts. <laughs> All right, Tommy. I, I appreciate everything you're doing. Considering you're not a, a not a lifelong parky, you're doing a hell of a, a hell of a job down there. Well, thank you so much. We're trying. So, Tommy, great guy. Oh um, yeah, a lot of energy. Super stoked about the community, which I love. We need more people like that. More uh, cheerleaders. He has, yeah, he had a, had a full. Ca- I mean, we could have just sat there. He was willing to go through the whole calendar for the rest of the year. Absolutely. But I don't know if Tommy has it, it, it can even come close to Bobby. Bobby the Breeze. Yeah, Tommy's got the spread, the spread on the calendar. But this next guy, I think he's got the spread on just about every inch of the weather. <laughs> so, Brett, we have. We've kind of dug deep for a really unique look at the weather mm-hmm. because you and I are going to be jumping into some cold water. So Right. Well, to be fair, if we did the trends ourselves, we are not weather experts. We're not. Chances are likely that our weather sources are going to be wrong. I've bought a lot of bread for no reason. Not lately because I'm on no carb, but I bought a lot of water. There you go. I bought a lot of <laughs> bottled water based on weather reports that are never right. Right. I I don't know how many times the schools all close. Right. We talked about the other day. And then nothing happens. Nothing happens. So we're kind of trying to bring a unique perspective to the weather. We found somebody. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're kind of, are we consulting the tea leaves? I mean, we may even do that. Yeah, but that's definitely not the case here. Right. We've got somebody who's got the inside scoop. The inside track, if you will. I don't know. An insider? He may have an insider. So let's call our guy now. I I hope he answers. Get him on the phone. (laughs) I really do. Hello? Yeah, is this uh, Mr. Breeze? I'm sorry, Bobby the Breeze? (laughs) Harley, (laughs) he's an amateur, I'm sorry. Bobby's fine. You can just stick with Bobby, all right? So, Bobby, we really wanted... Somebody with a unique perspective on the weather. We feel like you're the guy. Right. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a gambling man, but my money's on anything but what we have to offer local weather wise. I'm, I'm willing to do anything. Absolutely. So could you tell us a little bit though about how you get your weather information? How, how that whole process works? Oh, you want to know my history? Um, well, you know, I've been handicapping weather. Uh, uh, the 80s, you know, everybody else got into sports book, and uh, I thought, you know, the weather is so inconsistent. I mean, you can predict, you know, the Patriots are going to win 10 games. I mean, it's a question of how, but 
you know, you can almost put your money on the Patriots, except this year. But with weather, I mean, it's anybody's guess, really, uh, how it's going to go. So I thought, you know, the weather people are never right. You know, I know a couple people uh, that I can get a little bit of an inside edge and, uh, you know, provide not only a service, but, you know, maybe make a little scratch out of the deal. So, Bobby, are, are you familiar with the inconsistency? Is that a word that we could use for Oklahoma weather? I would think that inconsistency should be the hallmark of Oklahoma weather. Well, I kind of feel like we're just throwing caution to the wind and letting somebody from the outside give us a perspective. But again, I think it's better than, uh, I don't know, nine times out of ten what we get in a typical season. So when you and Brett talked earlier, you did uh, we did discuss that we are doing the the polar bear plunge coming up on February 1st. Right. Are you familiar with Oklahoma weather or the, the I, I don't know, the sport of jumping into cold water, polar bear plunges? I mean, I feel like we're kind of, it's a gamble. I still feel like we're gambling with, with, with trying to take a bookie's perspective. But yeah, I mean, what do you, what, what do you know? Uh, what do I know? Uh, I know a lot of things. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be here. They wouldn't call me Bobby the Breeze if I didn't know a few things about weather. What I do know for sure are the odds are heavily in your favor to at least get on the water. Now, finish? I don't know yet. We're still working out the numbers on that one. But, you know, I've never been to Oklahoma, but Oklahoma weather is well documented. Everybody in the country knows it's not so. Uh, you know, it's anybody's guess. But, again, I got the, I got the juice. I know exactly what, how I'm going to play this one. It might be a little soon to make some harsh, you know, some, uh, I don't know, solid predictions. But I think we'll be ready to go come January 31st for sure. Now, these polar, you know, these polar plunges, they happen all over the place. More power to you. I think it's, I, I, I think it's a bad idea. I'm not doing it, but, you know, it's not me. I agree. This wasn't my idea. This was a Brett idea. And I, I hate the water. <laughs> But I think more importantly, I think our listeners want to know, you know, how how do you do it? How do you how do you predict the weather? Right. I mean, your resume is pretty sterling, but I've been known to fluff a resume just to get a job as a delivery driver. So yeah, there's got to what what's the secret? Oh, so you, oh yo oh, oh yeah, you want to know how I how I, I'm so accurate? Right. I I mean, you know, we're I mean we're paying customers. I kind of think we need to get our <laughs> money's worth, right? So I know a guy. I got, uh, let's just, we'll call him my little weather bird. And he, uh, he works for the National Weather Service, which is ironically in Oklahoma. I mean, you guys got some crazy in weather, you know? Exactly. I mean, it's why it, I think it, that, that has to be why it's so hard for our four, five, and nine audience to, to predict what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, they sell a lot of bread. <laughs> they do. I, I say that a lot, but we've sold a lot of bread because of these guys. Bought a lot of bread. So you you know a guy. It basically, I mean, we That's know a bad. guy. We know a lot of guys. I mean, but they, they just don't seem to be right all the time. You know, you schmucks, you get the seven and ten day forecast. I get like a 366, 366 days of weather. So it's really easy for me to predict what's going to happen. So 366 days out. I mean, how do you how do you miss if you basically you get a year plus a day? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, exactly. Oh, and you know the uh, those weather thermometer things that you know people see them around and they're like, what are those things? Yeah, those are weather thermometers put in by the union. Guess who? The teams. Mm, that I mean, I I get it, but it sounds it sounds a little. A little too conspiracy. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not a, I'm not 100 percent sure I'm all in on this particular aspect of your weather prediction models. Hey, don't believe me. That's your business. But every good book has got a good insider. Whether they're playing on the team, they're in the locker room, they're driving the freaking cab, or they're cleaning the shit. Suit yourself. So I exactly how is this whole? I don't know whether. Parlay? Parlay? I mean, is it a par do you get a weather parlay card? If you're going to be a good handicapper, you got to have good sources. you got to have good information, solid information. And, uh, I mean, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, 
I'm the guy. Like, do you make a lot of money as uh, with weather betting? That doesn't seem like it would be a really lucrative business. I've never. I've been to Vegas a few times. Never seen anything uh, for handicapping weather. Are you serious? Do I do a good business? What do you think Five and Nine get their weather? I used to work with Fox, but who the frick watches Fox? <laughs> Nobody. Besides, they got the same weather as those other guys. At four. That's off the record, though. Is this thing on? <laughs> yeah, I do great. But thanks for asking. I mean, it's no... We're, we're not taking a shot here. Absolutely not. I mean, I just, you know, never. I've never heard of it before. So we've got our, our thing coming up on right. February 1st, that weekend. What, what are you thinking? Is it a long shot? So predictions for this weekend, uh, 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 the weekend of the event. Um, right now, I got it going down uh, twenty to one that the water is going to be between forty-two and fifty. Uh, Hundred to one that there's going to be a serious shrinkage issue. I mean, it's going to be cold, people. I mean, I don't know where. I don't take cold showers uh, unless it's been a long night. So you know, I, you're not going to catch me jumping in. Um, it's just uh, not a chance, but I, I guarantee that there's a better chance of, uh, you know, some excuses, if you know what I mean. Uh, but, <laughs> but why we uh, we're having issues? But anyway, but I also hear, um, you know, there's a couple of prop bets. One of them is that your guy over there, Brett. Is Brett right? Yeah, it's Brett, and I've I've heard there's rumors abound that I may drown. Well, you don't know how to swim. I, in my defense. I don't want to, well, I guess if I didn't want to die, I'd learn how to swim, right? (laughs) You don't know how to swim? No. Come on, who doesn't know how to swim? I know, I just, it never, I I like to dive off a diving board and go to the bottom, but I have a hard time getting back up to the surface. Well, you got time to learn, right? Yeah. Right? I think I, I don't know, it's like two weeks away, I don't think so. You don't have time to learn to swim? I can learn to float. You're going to die. I am. Do we have an over under on Brett's gonna die? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm gonna put it probably. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's like a 100 percent chance. <laughs> I mean, I can take bets on anything. You know, I can take a bet that a pigeon's gonna shit on a Corvette. That's. I mean, there's a there's a lot of pigeons. I mean, this is there's this is kind of like mini pigeon forge. There's a lot of opportunities there. I don't know that I would. What a gamble on that, though. It, there are some crazy prop bets out there. I, I fully understand that, but that one seems a little bit more obscure. A little bit. But I don't think it's a stretch. But I think back to the point, though. Yeah. I mean, what... Bobby, realistically, I don't want to freeze to death. I don't want to get pneumonia. I think you... I think Harley could rescue me, right? I mean, No, I cannot rescue you. No? No, I think you guys are going to be in good shape down there. The weather looks like it's going to be, you know, mid-50s, low-30s. There's things going on, you know, in the afternoon, you'll be just fine. The water's going to be cold. It's out. It's, just, it's, it's January. So uh, it looks like you're going to be freezing your nods up. But, uh, well, I'm not looking forward to it, but I did sign Didn't sign us up. No, you volunteered us. It was a, well, it was a, yes, and we did talk to the guys down there, and there, there are some pretty hefty expectations. Come January, not 31st, but February, February 1st. 1st. Yes. I'm not 100% sure I feel like I know what's going to happen on that day. Mm-hmm. But we we appreciate you coming on the show. Well, no, best of luck to you. Let, let, let me leave you with a joke. Okay. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Can I leave you with a joke? Of course you can leave us with a joke. Other than the fact it's a joke that we're actually taking part in this thing. What are the rain chances in red heaven gone? <laughs> I don't I, know. I, don't, I I can't even bear to, to to guess, Bobby. Less than an inch. Oh, <laughs> burn, burn. <laughs> well, Bobby, thanks again for coming on the yeah. show. We really appreciate it. I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Absolutely. Uh, we've got other important weather affiliated or weather related. Oh, it's events. Oklahoma. We're always going to have it. All right, guys, take it easy. I'll let me later. Well, thoughts. <laughs> Are you hedging your bets? I don't want to make any bets on this. I feel like we we bet off more than we could chew. The I think the one thing that we can we can guarantee rain or shine, the water will be cold. The water is gonna be cold. Uh, the kids and I go down there swimming all the time. 
you can't swim and you're going to have to cross that thing. So I'm not sure how you're physically, you're not mm. pulling me down with you. I'm going in in a different <laughs> spot than you. I'll be like, where, where's Harley? They're yeah, like, no. Who is this guy? We get- need to get you floaties or one of those. I'm going to. I'm going to. I got to do something. I've already committed to doing it. I am not sitting on the bank. You, no. You physically can't. That's like telling yourself to pick yourself last. Telling No, that's like you telling the team captain to pick you last on the freaking kickball team. Not happening. No, I really think that if we don't if we don't do this, we're going to have to end the show. Like the embarrassment level, yeah, will be permanent. Permanently scar our records. Yeah. And we just can't do it. So we're if you guys want to see it, Come on down, yeah, February we'll 1st, Medicine Park, Yeah, right yeah. afternoon. Be there or be on the bank with me. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing it. I'm in. I'm all in. Come on, on. Come get all in with us. I wonder if it counts if you wear like a... The ducky thing? No, like a dive suit. Like one of those neoprene... There's going to be a guy. There's going to be some douchebaggy guy that's wearing one. He's like... Stretch, pulling his legs up and stretching. I know, but you wouldn't get cold. That's true. Is that I'm cheating? Not, I don't, I'm going to get cold because I'm going to sink to the bottom where it's the <laughs> coldest part of the freaking thing. <laughs> not to mention, it's a natural spring, right? Um, I think it comes off the dam there. But so. I don't think it, but in that regard, I don't think it raises above a certain temperature anyway, it's, as a general rule. No, it's normally really cool in the summertime, but I think it's, it's not going to be the same thing. Yeah, it's sulfur. If you were saying, "Hey, polar plunge at Sulphur Springs," not a chance, not a chance. It's ice cold. But anyway, hey, join us if you dare. We'll be there. It's the only okay show. I'm no? not Brett. Oh yeah, it's the only. An okay it's only. Show. A, it's well. Um, log on to Facebook. Check us out. Only yeah. an okay show on Facebook. You can see the schedule there. You can follow the links to the Medicine Park information. Yeah. But we'd love to see you out there. Um, come, come say hi. Come make fun of us. Or come meet Tommy. He's gonna be at the. He's gonna. You heard him. He's gonna be at the, the tavern. So and, and you might see Bobby as well. He's probably gonna Bobby. keep keep a track keep track of his uh, bets. He'll be out there with his little notepad and his little pencils in his ears and stuff like that. Anyway, Absolutely. It's been the only no case show. I'm Brett and I'm Harley and we're out of here. Peace. <laughs>